Hello YouTube, it's Austin Holloman. Back with another Promised Land Tanzanian video. Not a vlog, but a video. We got an interview with a highly requested Mark Meets Africa. His first name is Mark. And everybody in the comment section told me that I needed to collaborate with him. I didn't know about him until I got here. I'm glad I know him now. This guy's full of positive energy. He knows a lot. He's taught me a lot. Uh, he's actually younger than me, but he's old enough to be my grandfather. So, it, you know what I mean when I'm saying that? Like, he's like very mature. And I, I can really appreciate that. I, the majority of the time, well, not the majority of the time, while I'm here in Africa, I can see myself learning a lot and just having the country grow with me a lot more through this guy. As he showed me today how to ride the bus. I, I would have did it eventually, but mm, I don't know how long that would have been. He made it easy. He showed me through the market and everything. So if you would go ahead and introduce yourself. Wow. You know I still got to walk out the door, right? I got to yeah. be able to fit through the door. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you get big headed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Injecting all that good energy into my head. Man, stop that. I'm actually just happy. To, I'm Mark. Um, I came. I'm, I've been here three years now just over. I'm actually happy. He was request. I didn't know people were, requ were requesting him to come meet me because I was actually getting a few requests to go meet him. So I was like, huh? And so I reached out to him on, uh, on your comment section and with all the comments he had, he replied to mine and I said, what? And so I sent him my email, I think did, how did we get in? Uh, we, I sent you my email. email. Okay, yeah. yeah. And then we met. And it was quick, too. So that's amazing. I'm happy. And he's a good dude. He's, he's you know, obviously, y'all don't need me to say that because you watch his channel. But in terms of interacting with a person, it's nice to get a fresh new perspective of somebody coming in and actually having a decent time here. Because a lot of times you've got people that have been here a, a long time and they're kind of sort of on the lower end of the energy spectrum because they've seen so many negative things here. And they're not able to adjust their mindset to compensate for the fact that most of the people aren't actually out to get them. They're just suffering from symptoms of being here. So let's hold on to that. We'll get back to the lower end of how people are feeling. Let me Go ahead and give a little uh, overview of yourself. How old are you? Oh, I'm 22 now. 22. And where are you from? I'm from Las Vegas, born and raised. Why did you come to Africa? That's a hard one. You know, I don't know per se reasoning. I just, uh, hmm, that is a hard one. I got up one day and came here. It was a feeling I had that said, go to Africa. And I did. I came here, but now I know why I'm here. First country. Yeah, first country. And I didn't know why I came to Tanzania, but like I said, I know why I'm here now. I want to help a lot of our brothers and sisters get over here. Not so much to escape the racism in the West, even though that's why a lot of people are moving. I didn't move for that reason. I just wanted to see something different. And I came over here and I was able to see a different way. And a lot more people want to see that way. They want to live a different sort of life. They want the freedom that they desire and they want the lifestyle they want. And they come over here and they're not able to get it. And I say, I was able to come over here, learn a bit of the language, adapt the culture. I live in villages, I live in huts. I have people where I walk down the street, they're calling me uncle, they're calling me brother, they're calling me sister, they're ca I mean, not sister, but they're sisters and aunties and, and, and grandmothers and stuff. And so they show you so much love that you start to want to be more involved in the culture here. And then I saw a lot of people were coming over here and they didn't get that. They didn't get an ounce of that love. And I said, why is that? And it's because they didn't come with an open mind. So the resistance ended up causing friction. What is the open mind? Open mind is dissolving what you believe about a place and coming and experiencing it as it presents itself. If you come with preconceived notions, you're going to find yourself disappointed. Okay. So, what would you say is different about, because we spoke off camera, what would you say is different about how I came to Africa from what you could tell already versus those other people? The biggest difference off the top of my head is you've already traveled. Okay. A lot of the people I talk to have never traveled. People that watch my channel, I think my demographic is 45 to 65. Mm -hmm. And 
some of them are 65 plus. So they've never, some of them are that old and they've never been outside of America. Some of them have never really traveled outside of their side of the country, east side, west side, east coast, west coast, I mean. Some people haven't left their county or state. Some of them haven't. Yeah. Some people grew up in the country they grew up in. Some people grew up in the city they grew up in. So a lot of them have never even traveled, so they have no experience. You have traveled. You saw Asia before here. You saw Brazil. You saw Latin America. You were able to undo a bit of that programming before coming here. So you come here and you have a reference point of other things. You don't just have America, Africa. And then when one looks less than the other, you say, this isn't it, and go home. A lot of people did that. They came here, and because it was their first time traveling, they sold their houses, they sold their cars. I've talked to countless families over the course of three years. I do free consultations, and you know I'll get on the phone with these people, one hour, two hours, and they're like, I'm selling my house. I'm coming over there. And I'm like, whoa, hold on now. Have you ever traveled? What do you see yourself doing over here? Now it's slowing down. People are kind of sort of doing their own research, but they were so excited to go to a new place that they didn't realize what the new place was and that all places have good and bad. So they created a fantasy version of what Africa was and put themselves in it and then came here and became disappointed because expectations that they had were not met. Expectations that nobody here understood. And so there was a disconnect between what they wanted and what they got. And had they come and not expected anything, they would be okay because this place has a way of showing you yourself. We talked about that. What expectations? Expectations like, and I don't want to get too vulgar, but there are women, older women, who are coming here to look for sex. African men. Young African men. Would you say it's mainly black, white? It's, it's, I, I deal with a lot of the sisters. I deal, most of my demographic is African American, or diaspora as we call them. So they're usually melanated people from the respective countries they come from. And so they're coming over here and a lot of them are, and I'm not putting out, because I don't believe in calling our people out and putting out our dirty laundry, but I will say, because you asked the question, a lot of them expect something that isn't here. And then they wake up to the harsh reality. I've talked to like seven different people these are women that came here and married a Tanzanian man or are in a relationship with him, and they're getting beat. They didn't think African men were, they, they didn't know. They thought the that maybe I can come here and control that man, no. but that's not how it works here. So they get smacked upside their head and they don't deserve to be hit. They don't. But at the same time, they should have known. Because they didn't know, they're disappointed. And a lot of them, a lot of them leave. The other expectations are things like Africa has this uh, cheap way of living. So they come here with a thousand dollars and they think that's gonna last them ten years. Because somebody told them they could get a five bedroom house for ten dollars. And I'm not saying that's what they said, but they implied it. Nobody guided them when they were here. The biggest issue with people coming here and the biggest problem I try to solve is guiding people while they're here. Because I came here, I got off the airplane, I did not book a hotel. I was 19 years old, I had never traveled before didn't know the language, didn't know the culture, never really been outside of America. I got off that plane, didn't book a hotel. Something told me not to. The difference between them and me, I think, was at the time I came, there was really nothing about Tanzania that I saw. There was nobody moving over here. There weren't many, at least. There were people that had already been here, but it wasn't a big thing. So I didn't take it as a big thing. I chose Tanzania because it wasn't popular. And then I find that, you know, if I just... I don't know, I'm not religious, but I'm, you know, a little bit spiritual. And that feeling that I had guided me the entire three years I've been here. And I've had some trials, which are just exercises to make you stronger, to purify you and, and strengthen you, really. But nothing has sent me back. Okay. A lot of people, they don't want to bend. They don't want to go through the fire. They don't want to go through the crusher. They don't want to go through the polishing process. So I think that was shocking to hear that you have people coming over here with $1,000 thinking that's going to last them anything more than one month. And, 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 that's, and that's pushing it, though. And it could. For the lifestyle they want to live. For the lifestyle, that's the problem. They, they came, they did not adjust their life. I had one lady, I showed her an apartment. She was an elderly woman. I don't show people apartments, but she reached out to me. She said, young man, I love what you do. I said, okay. 
She said, I need you to help me find an apartment. I went, I heard her budget. I said, that's a little hard to find for what you want. And we went and checked three places out. On the third place, she, I don't know, got frustrated. And she said, and she did curse, but I'm not gonna curse on this video right now. But she essentially said, these, how come you, I ain't got no dang refrigerator? How come they ain't got no refrigerator in this house? I said, for the budget you're trying to work with, that's not normal. So instead of adjusting her lifestyle, she just got mad. A lot of people do that. They come here, they have expectations, they don't get their expectations meet, and then they leave because, and now they hate Africa. So they think it's a cakewalk. They think it's they a think cakewalk. They think they're gonna come in here and live like the president, and then they're gonna get- An African right, prince. Right, the prince or princess or whatever they want and it's just gonna be a cakewalk and they're gonna do it all for $10. I don't know how they believe that. And you know what, we're laughing, but this is really a sick thing happening. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's not funny, because it is a little bit of a, it funny. it's a funny situation to be in. Because you find yourself in a foreign country after you've sold all your assets in America, if you had any, and you're finding yourself having to go back to that. People have come here and they say things like, I hate America, I, didn't, I don't hate America. Me personally, I don't. I think it's got issues like everywhere else. I think the issues that it has, I don't want to deal with. Mm -hmm. So I choose which issues I want to deal with. Those issues are not for me to deal with. Because those are a whole different set. Some people are built for that, and I'm not. So I feel like you said in, in earlier on the interview we did, you said you feel more at home outside of America. I think a lot of people will find that to be a reasonable conclusion to traveling is that they will feel more at home outside of America, but you have to open yourself up to where you are. People come here saying, I hate the West, but then they act like the West. So they're unintentionally westernizing. Mm -hmm. They're unintentionally bringing the mentality they hate because they're traumatized by it, so they have to rely on it. They won't let it go. They won't become new in their mind. They're stuck in their ways and they come here and they become very disappointed because they're hurt people. They say hurt people hurt people and these people are hurt. So you have a bunch of hurt people moving to a new country where they have no support, where they have no community, where they have no fellowship, where they have nothing. And the people here do not see you as people of their, they don't, you're not gonna be walking down the street and they say, that's a Tanzanian. Because you walk like an American, you speak like an American, you're an American. Just because you're black doesn't mean you're African. That's not how people here see it. We see it that way, but we have to realize that we can't just see it our way and expect other people to agree. It's not how the world works. It's a spoiled brat mentality. So a lot of us come here and expect everybody to understand American problems, police brutality. You said it, the first time you saw police brutality was outside of America. Same here, first time I ever had an issue with a police officer was in this country. I've never had that issue in America. I was driving a Jeep, Grand Cherokee, 1997. No paint, no registration, no license plate. I didn't have a license, nor did I have a permit, nor did I have insurance, nor was that vehicle registered. Damn. I got pulled over, surely enough, because I was driving down to the store to get some more stuff so I could finish working on my car. This officer came up to me and said, you seem like a decent old white man said, you seem like a decent guy, don't get caught again, and let me go. Over here, I had a chip in my paint driving down one of these big roads. He said, your paint is destroyed, which was an over-exaggeration. He said, you have to pay or we're going to take your car. This was here. How much did you have to pay? It was only 15. It was like uh, 30,000 shillings, so like $7, $12. But the point is... That happened here, not there. I'm not saying it didn't happen, it's not happening to people, but it didn't happen to me. So that wasn't my gripe for leaving America. I just felt like coming here. Something told me come here and now I know why. I'm here, I'm trying to do my part because we all have a part to do in creating a way for people to be here and be okay. Because I was tired of getting phone calls from old ladies in the immigration office saying, this person wants $600 from me. And I said, what? And they're having, they're finding themselves in terrible situations because they don't know. They didn't do the research. They're here. They don't have anybody to support them. They're getting robbed. They're getting lied to. They're getting cheated because they're alone. In most countries in the world, government 
business people. They do business, they interact with you as a group, not as an individual. And we are a people that determine ourselves to travel, or we find ourselves traveling as individuals. We don't want to come together, we don't want to unite, we don't want to do anything. We didn't do it in America, and surely we won't do it over here. But now we're in a place where we are in a position where we should do that. We need to do that. We need to build a community and we need to come together and we need to support one another and finally love on one another, stop cheating, lying, and stealing from one another. So how do you feel about the expat community here in Tanzania? It's not the best thing, it's not the worst. Unfortunately, it is the embodiment of what we deal with as people in general. I didn't know my people's problems because I never experienced them in America. I didn't grow up around people that were like that. The first time I saw an African American behave in such a derogatory manner was when I came here. I wasn't exposed to that. Not to say I didn't have family that were like that, but they were very, very, very seldom like that around me. So when I came here, I've had people extort me for money or attempt to, African Americans. Elders, get this, I've had people throw their problems on me, I've had people threaten me, I've had people uh, uh, de degrade me, demean me, I've had people just lie on me, slander me, and it's like, what did I do to them? Most people that I've interacted with, elders that I ask what, what's going on, they tell me, Mark, I know you don't understand your people too well because you haven't experienced the, the bad side of them, but they're either jealous or they want to do what you're doing. And I, I had a hard time wrapping my head around this because I've never seen people behave like that. I saw that here. So I want to touch on the extortion part and we'll get back to the ex, uh, expat community topic. How were you extorted by another African American? Well, the thing is I'm doing a business. I want to build a community and there are, and again, I'm not calling anybody out because we got to get out of that. We're too quick to call each other out and destroy one another. See, we need to learn to work with one another and not destroy each other. We're so self-sabotaging that we refuse to do right by each other because we refuse to do right by ourselves because we don't love ourselves. Because we don't love ourselves, we don't love each other. Because we don't love each other, we fight each other. Because we fight each other, we don't go anywhere. Because we don't go anywhere, we suffer more. Because we suffer more, we become more hateful. Because we become more hateful, we suffer more. And it's a cycle that continues to feed itself. Our people are on a pathway outside of what is good. You know what I mean? So to get to the question, I, I had a brother, he was trying to do what I did. Or he was doing what I was doing and he didn't like the fact that I was doing it. So he said, you have to stop doing this because I want to do it. Crabs in a barrel mentality. I said, man, you, you, you don't like the fact that I'm doing what you're doing? And I, never, I couldn't understand it because I didn't do anything to this man. I did nothing. Then I find out later that it was a group of women who needed money to go back to America because they ruined their lives here. So they said, I'll just lie on Mark and say he stole from me, even though I'd never talked to them, I'd never interacted with them, I never knew them. So I'll just tell this brother who has a temper to go do this to Mark because I need something. So they got what they want and then they leave and he never hears from them again and he realizes late, oh wow, they used me. But that doesn't fix the fact that you came at me wrong. So instead of thinking, we react. Our people's, I'm sorry to keep going, our people's biggest problem is we don't think, we, we react, we, 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 I can't even speak, we react. I would, I'm not, I'm not gonna make you call anybody either. But in private, I would love to know the, the photos and names of those people so I can avoid them. Because, you know, I'm a YouTuber too, and they're going to come for me whether if it's with a smile on their face and they have the same, I need to know. So I've experienced, not all expats, but expats are the worst if you ask me. You know why? We, we, we spoke about this. They're the worst. Yeah, because they're the most desperate. They're the most desperate. They're in a place with no support. They become cutthroat. You're, they're cutthroat. You're more likely to get crossed by an expat outside of the United States than the, the poor local people. Yeah. Then the people at the bottom of the financial system are more trustworthy than the Americans that come to live in their country on a higher end of the, or so-called higher end of the financial scale. It happened to me last week here. Mm. First, I hadn't been here seven days, mm. and I have expats 
that I don't want to touch. I don't want to get into it. But I know. I know who it is. I was shown the messages, and I was shown what they were trying to do. Put me in a place of danger. Just got. Just got here. They lose their sense of humanity. Yeah, I haven't put up anything offensive to anybody. And, that's, and they don't like you. And they don't like it. I don't know what it is. I ain't done nothing to nobody. That's what I said. I didn't do anything. Everybody around me was like, yeah, you didn't. But they were like, you should give him what he wants. I said, so nobody's going to stand up for what's right? And everybody was like, no, nah, we just, we can't because, you know, it'll affect us in this way. I had a brother tell me, well, don't do him like that because I had a method for really jacking this person up like really jacking them up. And I had to strengthen myself to not do that because it would have ruined the lives of a lot of people for a long time. And this brother, this elder comes to me and says, please don't do that. I said, why? It would help me in this situation. He said, because it'll affect me. I said, what? So he didn't care how I was dealing with the situation. He didn't care if I was in danger. He only cared about the fact that me taking action to protect myself would affect him in a negative way. A person who I was helping at the time, financially. Wow. It's the worst thing ever. And again, this isn't to bash our people, and this isn't to make a negative video. This is to state that what's going on here is not right, and the only solution is for reasonable-minded people to come together and give a solution. Because right now, you have people that say they want community, who when you contact them, they don't want community. They just want to be in charge of something. They want to be responsible for doing it. And you can't even get on board with some of the stuff they're doing. Why? Because it's not done right. It's not good for the people. A lot of what people are pushing for our people is not good for them. Because it's self, it's, what is the word? It's, it's self, it's self, the word is out of my mind right now. It's for themselves. It's selfish. Selfish. Yeah. It's, it's, the, man, I just don't get it. I don't get it, but that's why I'm here. That's what I'm finding out. Everything I'm doing now, solving a problem that doesn't really apply to me, I could live in Africa. I'd be fine. I can go anywhere and I'll be fine. I've traveled. I'm fine wherever I go, because I can adapt. But it bothered me so much seeing that a lot of people were uplifting their lives. People that reminded me of my aunties and sisters and mom. Coming over here and then having a terrible time. I had a woman. She's 54 years old. She came here with her son. Her son is about my age, right? When I was taking care of the, the, the street children, she actually came with another woman who was even older than her, and they would help me cook for them. They would feed them, right? So we bring groups to help, and they would feed them with me. They never charged me. They never you know, wanted anything from me. So these people were here to help me. This woman sold her house to come here. She sold her car. She had a great job. She had a great you know, life. She came over here. And the way she was treated and the things that were happening to her from her own people, in addition to the people here, made her go back to America. This is a woman who despised America. She said, I hate that place. You could hear it in her soul when she spoke. That woman went back to America, and the text I got from her was, white people never treated me that bad. This is a woman that lived through a time where racism was a thing, a big thing. You're talking about this is African American men. African a woman. That she's all to. people. She came here and- she's talking about the locals here? She's talking about a combination. The way they did her and the way that they did her. Way, you know, and it's not always their fault either. Sometimes you just don't know. And, but at the end of the day, she went back. She wasn't happy to go back. She had to. I said, no, nah, that has to be the last one. And even though it wasn't the last one, it's my mission not to let that happen again. Because I love that woman. She reminded me of my mom. Speaks like her, walks like her. Very timid woman, very, but strong, you know? So I saw familiarity, I said, dang, this woman is really suffering here. And for her to have all this hope to come to a place only to be spit out, man, I said, if she had somebody to tell her that's not the right price for that service, or don't go this way, or here's some advice, or let's come together, there's a community for people in your situation. If she had somebody like that, guess what, she'd still be here. I said, people have been coming here for three years, five years, why don't we have it? It's because we're pulling each other down instead of solving the problem.
And unfortunately, you have a lot of anti-community builders. I'm not a pan-African. I'm not a, a, a pro-black. I'm not black excellence. I'm just decent per, a, a decent person trying to do decent things. Okay. Take away all the labels. Just be decent. People are here trying to, I don't get it. So you, you're, from my understanding, because what do you do to give back to the Africans, the Tanzanians in the community here? I, I can kind of see where you kind of tap into what you do for Americans that come here or expats. So elaborate a little more on what you have done, what your plans are to help the community here. I have a company called Merge. Even before Merge, I lived with the locals. Everything I'd see, the thing that set me apart from a lot of people here is a lot of people here wouldn't leave their house. They wouldn't go down the street and say hi. They wouldn't interact with anybody. They didn't like talking to people. They were afraid of eating at local places. It's all this stuff that makes us separate. I was just, I got off that plane and I was ready to interact with these people. It took me nine months before I met an American here because I lived two hours away from everybody. But I got to see the real culture, and it's the only thing that kept me here besides what I said I was going to do. My word and the fact that I saw there's good in these folks. You have to bring it out a certain way, or you have to look at it a certain way to see it sometimes, but there's good. Loving, kind people, if you know how to treat them. But a lot of us come here with high minds, and we don't even know it. We don't even know it. When we refuse to learn the language, we refuse to adapt some of the culture, not all. We refuse to let go of our mentality in the West. It's okay to keep those things, but don't keep them and then say, I'm here to build for Africa, because now you come as a savior. Africa doesn't need saviors. It needs brothers and sisters returning home. It's going to be a process. Yes, there's differences and there's conflicts. There's things we don't understand about them and they don't understand about us, but it doesn't help if we hate them. It doesn't help if we keep getting scammed by them either, because there's wrong on both sides. So how do we make a space for everybody to come together? That's why I built Merge. Merge was my idea to say, Merge means come together. So Merge by nature is us coming together with them. Merge has almost nothing to do with diaspora. It's people. It just so happens to be they're the people and then these people here, we have to come together. We don't rise if they don't rise. They don't rise if we don't rise. We need each other, but one of us wants to be bigger or better or stronger or smarter or than the other. And so we have the same problem we faced in America. Someone's trying to control us, but now we come here and we try to control them. Then we try to control each other. Then we try to do, it's, we just need guidance. And if we have a community where people understand at least one basic fundamental principle of unity, we all agree on this. Some people are here, they are Christian. I don't talk to anyone that isn't Christian. Okay, wow, but you wanna build for a community. There's people here that are Hebrew Israelite. I don't speak to non-Hebrew Israelites. It's not, not open-minded at all. At all, and they come here and they carry the same colonizer mentality that they hated in America. I don't talk to you because you're black. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to sit next to you because you're black. And, so and, how are we different? And you're in somebody else's country. Even worse. That's, that's, but that's very like. But they come with, oh, I'm going to teach y'all something. I was here and there was a time I ran out of money. I learned to find a $17 apartment per month. $17. $17 a month. And you mean to tell me you can't make it here? Because I'd pay up the whole year in one sitting. Tell pay myself. 10 years, man. Yeah, yeah I, I never have to leave. Yeah. I get citizenship. But here's the thing, though. I have people, I had a woman call me just the other day. Last, not even last week, this week. Or no, it's the next week. Last week. She called me. She's an elder. She called me screaming. Please, let me live in your house. Mm -hmm. I met this woman. I helped her out maybe a year ago. Got her some groceries and stuff every, every few weeks because she was living here on donations from other people. Like her family was taking care of her. And in one year, her situation didn't change. So she reaches out, never heard from her after all that help. But I hear from her because her brother who was in the state stopped sending her money or something. And so she's like, Mark, I know you have that big building. Could you let me live in it? I said, that's a business and 
I don't know you well enough to let you be around my baby. She said, oh, you know, then she calls the next time. It was the next day. Please, they're going to put me out of my house. And da -da -da -da. I had to say, you're an elder and I want you to act like it. Just because you're in a desperate situation doesn't mean you have to act desperate. This wasn't trying to degrade her. This wasn't trying to put her down. This was, I need you to really hear yourself. But when you put a mirror in front of people, they try to break the mirror because they don't like what they see, but what they see is them. This place is a mirror. And how you are is going to reflect back at you and multiply in some cases. Most people aren't ready to see what they are. Wow. That was a really powerful words. Oh. <laughs> uh, so this interview is already, it was a good interview, so I didn't even realize 30 minutes have went past. So I'm just gonna ask you one more question. We're gonna wrap it up, because uh, I don't want the video to be too long. We're gonna have to do a part two and three and four to this, y'all, because he has a lot of, you could just let him talk. Yeah. And he has a, a preacher's message almost. It's very deep, it's very deep. So two questions. Would you, knowing what you know about the community here and how much of a culture shock it is coming here, because I had been to six countries mm -hmm. and this was still a culture shock coming here. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend Americans come here for their first trip? Honestly, yes. But realistically, sometimes no. I do a lot of consultation calls. There's sometimes I tell people, don't come here. Go to the, this country instead. Honestly, I think you should go wherever you feel led to go. Don't let somebody tell you to come here. I came to Tanzania because I didn't hear anything about Tanzania, and something told me go to Tanzania. I looked at Ghana, and then I said, well, there's too many Americans there. I looked at the Gambia, because it was called the Smiling Coast, but they were closed at the time. I said, dang, I wanted to go. And it's funny, they closed their borders right when I was booking my ticket. See, that voice that told me to come here told me not to go to Ghana, the Gambia. It said, that's not where you need to be right now. I said, I want to go there anyway. So I was booking the ticket, and on the website, I get the notification, as I'm about to pay and waste my money, close their borders. Something said, look to the east. I looked at Kenya. I said, that's too westernized. I looked down, I said, I've never heard of Tanzania. Didn't see much about it at the time. So I went here, came here and it was great. Never left. Never left. I've traveled of course, but in terms of having a base, it's here. So to answer your question, would I recommend people come here? Go where you feel you need to be. Don't let someone tell you where you need to be. See, the only right choice is the one you make. Because I don't know you. You better have a good enough relationship with you, yourself, and you that you can make a decision and be okay with it. And then if you're going to come here, make it work. Learn to adapt. There's a way for everything to work. If you refuse to bend, you will break. Because when the wind blows and the tree don't bend, guess what it does? It snaps. you got to be a little flexible. Adjust your thinking so that you're open to the idea of trying and doing something new. Don't come across the world just to be the same. Because a lot of people say they hate America. The truth is they don't hate America. They hate their circumstances in America. So their circumstances in America, guess what they do when they leave? They bring those same circumstances here. The mindset, the mentality, the refusal to adjust. So they bring it here and guess what they find themselves? Miserable. So they say, man, I thought America was bad. This is bad, too. And they pick another country and another country and another country. And guess what? They never find a happy place because the truth is they're not happy people. They refuse to look at themselves and say, where do I need to heal before I move again? So everyone else is the problem. Every other country is the problem. Tanzania is the problem. America is the problem. I believe you can live in peace anywhere. How are you? But we don't want to look at ourselves because we're the victim. Not saying that we don't have any reason to be upset. History has treated us very harshly. But when are we going to say, you know what, let me stand up and keep going. If we lay on the ground and say, oh, but he did this. If the snake bites you, do you lecture the snake? No. You understand that that's a snake. It did what it does. It did what it naturally wants to do. It doesn't feel bad about it. So if someone's making you feel bad and it seems to be in their nature to do that, that is their nature. So leave that thing alone so you don't avoid the snake because it's dangerous. 
I mean, because you hate it. You avoid it because it's dangerous. You avoid it because it's not safe to be around. You don't hate the snake. Hate takes a lot of energy. Energy you could be using to build a business, travel, enjoy life. A lot of people coming over here are religious. I myself am not religious, but I do believe in a relationship with a higher power. But even whether you're religious or relationship oriented or spiritual or whatever you are, there's a concept in most beliefs of self-responsibility and self-reflection. Why don't we do it? We'd find ourselves a lot happier if we said, you know what, I could just let that go. Don't forget, but let it go. Move on, take that energy and use it for something else. But our people are so stuck on trauma. I, I, I even started saying this, some wounds are fatal wounds. We're a wounded people, I understand. Some people will heal, most won't. They are just gonna have to let that sickness that they've developed in their mind run its course. You know, they're not gonna change. Some of them won't, some of them will. It's not my place to make them change. But if you can give them the choice, at least they have that. Right now, they don't have a choice. They do, but the choice is inside of them and they don't wanna look inside. So I wanna give them a choice outside of themselves. We will guide you. I call people, I, or I have people call me. I'll be on the phone with somebody two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours. You look at this phone right now. Yeah, I did 62 messages from 7.08 p.m. It's 7.21. In less than 15 minutes, 68 people wanna talk because they wanna get themselves ready to come here or they are already here having problems. So every day at two or 3 a.m., I go and answer all my messages as best I can. Emails, it's the same. You wanna see how many emails? This is just on this phone. I could take out this other phone too. Look at this, emails, David, business in Tanzania, investment, all these people wanna know something. I could take out this one and it's the same thing. I done dropped my key. People are struggling here. It's not to say that this is a bad place, it's to say that there's no real system for them to be here. Our people, unfortunately, are used to systems and programs. So they need welfare, some of them. And I'm not saying this to degrade us, no. Do not hear that as my message. Please understand what I'm trying to say is, we come from a place and a mindset where we feel we need help. And so, because that's how we feel, that's what our reality becomes. We need help. I'm not here to judge us, I'm here to give that help. Until our people can stand on their own two feet. I tried to get together with other people, some of these other expats, and what I'm realizing very quickly, they don't want that because they function in dysfunction. They benefit from the hurt of our people. And when I start introducing solutions, people come after me. Mark, you effing up. What you mean telling people they can come and, and there's a way to, for them to be financially stable here? Why are you telling them that? They don't want to. That's the same thing that the white man did to us. And it's not even a white and black issue. It's somebody has somebody has the desire to control another person, what they know, what they don't know. Why are we doing that? We come over here. See, I'm sorry to keep going, but to finish this. The snake is the snake. If the snake is a person who is a conqueror and is evil by nature, as some people think. That's just how they are. You can't be mad at a snake for being what it is. It just is what it is. You can respect it and you can avoid it. My issue is not with the snake. My issue is with the man that looks at the snake and says, I wanna be like that, because he's a liar. He is not a snake, but our people come over here and they become the snake. So now we say we're escaping the snake, we're leaving the snake. If the snake is the white man or the system of the white man where it's, oh, I'm gonna oppress you and I'm gonna conquer you and it's in my nature, it's in my blood, let's say that's true. Well, then that's how he is. He can't control that. Understand your enemy and understand he's not your enemy. He just is that way. So there's no point in hating it. You just have to understand it, accept it. Don't agree with it, but accept it. The problem is they look at that, they come over here, and say, oh, there's no snake, I'll be the snake. They're not a snake, but because they're pretending to be a snake, they're acting like a snake, they have the characteristics of a snake, they're lying, they're a lie. See, the snake is what it is, it's naturally like that. There's nothing wrong with the snake. 
It was created to be like that. Even a trash can was made to hold trash, so saying a trash can is dirty is a stupid expression. Because by nature, it's supposed to be dirty. It's designed for that. So the snake is supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be vicious. It's supposed to bite you. It's supposed to get close and strike you. It's supposed to stab you in the back. So why are we leaving that and then going to become it? Don't you think that's a, a bit odd? That's what people are doing. They're coming over here and they're becoming the snake because they see that the snake, their methods work. And because they themselves do not have the level of maturity or creativity to make it over here, they only revert back to the system that they know works. Except this time, they're in, they're in the big seat, right? So now they say, you know what? I remember in America, we were oppressed in this way. So if I do that over here, it'll work. So they just take on whatever they have over there and they become that over here. That's sick. That's worse than the snake. That is so much worse than the snake. Well, I appreciate that information. Uh, guys, we're gonna have to do a part two and three of this interview. I'm gonna I'm 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 meet up with him a lot while I'm out here because this guy has a wealth of knowledge. He has a really good vibe and he'd be a great addition to collaborate with on the channel. If you guys would like to hear more of his very positive commentary and what it's like to actually be in Africa from a guy that's been here three years, right? Three years? Just over. Three years, okay. Go check out his channel. It's Mark Meets Africa. Check out his channel. Give all his videos a like. Subscribe. Leave a comment saying you found him from Austin's video. Yeah, let me know. And make sure you give this video a like, comment, subscribe. I'll see y'all in the next video because it's really that bad. Dang, thank you for having me.